So Gabby got to see my previous starter, and I'm going to try to do this with one hand. So this is what it's like now. You can see it's nice and bubbly, and it's uh, not all separated. It's more like pancake batter now. You can see all the bubbles. Look at all the bubbles. I think I'll make bread tomorrow. This is what it's like when you first um, refresh the starter and you're mixing a little bit of starter with equal parts of, uh, by weight of flour and water. I'm trying to not drop the foam. I want to show you how thick this is. Not like pancake batter at all, but um, as you remember the 24 hours later, it's like that. Isn't that amazing? Crazy. That's all. Okay, we're going in. I'm gonna stir it and see. Ouch. Um, I'm gonna stir it up and see what happens. Cause I'm getting ready to make my bread. Pardon me, I'm leaning on it to make it not move since I'm not an octopus. It's so pretty. Some of the bread people name their starters, which I think is kind of weird, but now that I'm actually ready to make a loaf of bread, I want to name my starter. I don't know why. So I'm kind of torn. I have to figure out what to name it. Except once it has a name, if I forget to feed it and it dies, I'll feel really guilty because I'll be like, I killed Heather or whatever. Um, yeah, I'm weird. It's so pretty. It's so totally different than how it is the night before when you mix it and it's just like goo. And now it's like pancake batter. I need my hand to measure things, so I'm going to stop recording now. And, uh, yeah, here we go. So I just mixed the starter, water, salt, and flour. That's all the ingredients. The starter is flour and water anyway. So this is flour, water, salt. That's all that's in here. And I just mixed it, so it's um, pretty just sticky and um, not really dough-like yet. Although it is actually stretchier than it was a minute ago. I was trying to show you how it wasn't stretchy at all. And then I'm going to come back and... Uh, maybe three minutes, because I hear that it will become really stretchy even in just a few minutes. Okay, let's see what the dough is like. I kept the cover on until the last moment because there is a fly in my kitchen and it's making me crazy. And I wet my hand so that it won't stick, hopefully. Whoa, it's really stretchy now compared to, you know, not even five minutes ago. And um, it's not very attractive right now. It's just a blob. But in a few hours, it will resemble a lovely lump of dough. See you later. We are going to unveil the bread. Whoa! It looks like a big fluffy thing of dough. I shouldn't. Well, we're going to pour it out into this pan, but we're going to butter the pan first. So I'm going to stop the camera. Butter. Yeah. <laughs> it has risen, I believe. It has easily risen double like it's supposed to, so this stage will be to transfer it to the baking pan and then cover it loosely with um, oiled cellophane and let it rest in the refrigerator. Um, and I'll be... it did? Whoa. There's a little bubbles breathing. Yeah. How cool! Anyway, we'll be baking it in the morning. It's going to sit in the refrigerator overnight. Super short video to show you what it looks like in the bowl. The bowl is that big and that's how full it is. And Lynette tried to make a smiley face on it, but I'm pretty sure that will get um, sucked in as it rises. It's around 3.30 in the afternoon. We're going to shove it in the fridge. I'll probably pull it out of the fridge around 6 or 7 in the morning and bake it about an hour later. So we'll see what it looks like when I pull it out of the fridge in the morning. Alrighty, we are ready to see what the bread looks like after having rested in the oven or in the uh, yeah in the refrigerator overnight. And so it has definitely risen. I don't know if that doubled or not, but um, I'm sure that was good enough. And I'm going to let it sit out for about an hour before I bake it. So we'll take a quick peek at it again right before I shove it in the oven. And we'll see what it looks like. Bye. And it did rise some more while it was uh, waiting for the oven to preheat and hanging out. I might um, 
put a little bit of scrap dough on top to decorate it for fun because uh, her smiley face kind of disappeared. But um, other than that, I'm about to shove it in the oven. Let's see what it looks like when it's all done. So this is our finished bread. Came out of the oven just a minute ago. And my smiley face thing came out really weird. It's kind of a, a bit of a mutant. This is how tall it is. I don't know. How tall is that? So that's pretty good. That was baked in a one and a half quart casserole dish. And it popped right out with no problems at all. We buttered up the dish nicely. So um, it smells fabulous. We're looking forward to eating it. So I'll take a crumb shot later on. Hello, so this is my crumb shot. It looks lovely, and it was delicious. We ate half the loaf last night um, as part of dinner. And, um, you know, when I was reading about making sourdough, they were saying that there's a complexity to the flavor that you don't get in a yeasted bread or a store-bought bread, and I really didn't understand that because I'd never experienced it before, so, you know, whatever, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me, but now that I've made this, I I understand there, and that's the best words. There is a complexity to the flavor profile that I can't describe, and it's good. And it's a you know it's a baby starter, so it could be uh, changing as it as time goes on. I hear that happens, but it's a good thing, and we liked it, and we gobbled up half the loaf. Great restraint to not just eat the whole thing. The crust was fabulous. The top part is chewy. The sides and the bottom where it touched the uh, buttered casserole dish, those are really crispy. I've made a lot of bread in my life, um, sometimes from scratch, usually from scratch actually, sometimes in a bread machine, quite often just in the oven, and um, sometimes from a mix, you know, just lots of bread that I've made. And I've never had a crust like this. This is a nice crunchy, crispy crust. I'm really pleased. The top is chewy, the sides and bottom are crunchy, and the inside is kind of a chewy, like how sourdough would be. Anyway, so I uh, stored it in a brown paper bag, just a lunch sack, because I thought if I stored it in a plastic bag, then that uh, fabulous crust would not be the same. So this was great, this was fun, I'm really glad I made it, and I hope that this little video series will inspire some of you to consider making your own sourdough starter, which I have ref I will reference the uh, link. I'm not going to give you instructions because I can't do it better than they could. So the link will be below, and I hope you have fun with your own sourdough journey. Bye!